Like many of you, I was skeptical about the Tag Boondock trailer. Like, crossing a bamboo bridge for the first time type of skeptical. But like the title of this video states, I was wrong. But how wrong was I? Not only will I be sharing my own opinions on this trailer today, I have a special guest today. Brad has taken his tag boondock trailer and put over 24,000 miles on this trailer. And it's very similar, his story, to other stories I've heard in the field. So come along with me on this journey. I can't wait to share it with you. My name is Brad Raspit. Having a good time camping on my way to Illinois to visit my sister and visit my son in Washington, D.C. I do a lot of boondock camping. And uh, this is my tag trailer I've had for a couple of years. I did a lot of research looking around a lot of different trailers. This works for me, just me and my dog. Uh, it's the perfect size and uh, it's a huge step up because prior to this I had been boondock camping with my little Ford Ranger truck and a canopy and cooking on the tailgate sleeping in the bed so this is like the Taj Mahal compared to that. So I'm just gonna start here by giving you an idea of how many of these tag trailers are actually on the road. So in terms of production, Tag Trailers puts out about 200 to 300% more than any trailers out there. So my first point and why I actually brought you here, 20 minutes from here is a waterfall that all the guidebooks say is the best waterfall in the region. So everybody flocks to it. That trail is just well worn. But in fact, there are many waterfalls in this region that are better than that one. And that's kind of how I thought about Tag owners originally. So I'm thinking they haven't seen any other trailers. It's the only ones they know. And I assumed that they just didn't do their research just like these hikers who go to the other waterfall are missing out on this great opportunity. I'm looking at this and it looks brand new. Uh, what type of places have you taken this? Well, um, I've taken this all the way almost up to the Arctic Circle and down to Homer, Alaska. Gave it a really good uh, I guess you could call it a test. Uh, some of the roads up in Alaska aren't really great. And I, to be honest with you, I beat the heck out of this trailer, but uh, I've had so many road trips in the last couple of years with this. Um, I went to Colorado for a teardrop rally in Palisade, Colorado. Road trips are kind of a big thing with me. I'm a retired firefighter turned beekeeper, so I have a lot of spare time. So I, at least, I like to take at least once a year, I take a whole month off and uh, do, go somewhere for the whole month. And right now I'm taking a month off. And like I said, I'm headed across country from Washington State to Washington, D.C. And then when I come back, I'm going to stop for the teardrop rally in Palisade, Colorado again and spend a week there in Palisade, Colorado. And then I'll head home to Mount Vernon, Washington. Almost everyone I have met on the road has a similar story to Brad. Everyone who owns a tag trailer, they're either full-timing, they are just gallivanting around or crossing the country. None of these guys are one to two days a year campers. And so just note what Brad says here, he definitely did his research. If you compare the tags and the tabs to <laughs> The major manufacturers, most people I know of that have actually gone out and physically touched or compared, there, there isn't much of a comparison. Um, and it, it shows in, in the quality of the items and, and some of the things. I, um, I didn't give you the background on the year that I spent researching different kinds of trailers. And I, I can't even remember all the different names. I actually drove up to Canada for one particular brand in British Columbia and went to the factory and looked at the trailers. Uh, I'm, there were trailers that are made in Texas I looked at. I'm trying to think Happy Camper, the Bush, something or other. But I looked at a lot of trailers and I went down to, to the dealership and looked at the two they had on the lot that were already sold. And that's what sold me. When, when, when you get out there and start looking at trailers and put some hands on, whatever you're looking for, whether it's you know something big enough for a family of four or just a couple with a couple of big dogs, just you got to get out there and you got you to gotta shop and you got to do hands on. And you can tell pretty quickly when you start looking just past the service what's quality built and what's not quality built. And in my mind, uh, the new camp trailers are the best in the nation as far as the quality build. My next misconception came from a lack of angry campers in the forum sections and all over online. Where were they? 
So why was I not hearing angry comments everywhere? With that many trailers on the road, I'm bound to hear a lot. And so my only assumption was, these people are just not putting miles on their trailer. I mean, you look at a trail like this. Any season I come out here, it's always looking different because the weather is just doing so much damage to it. And so my assumption was these other brands are getting their trailers out there and you're hearing the squeaky wheel because they're actually putting those road miles on it. And these tag owners must not be. How many miles do you think you've put on her? Oh, <laughs> look at this guy. Just a second. Um, I keep track of my mileage so I know when to repack the wheel bearings. By the time I get home, I'll have 23,298 miles on it. So almost 24,000 miles in the last two years. My next misconception was just how much people were pushing these trailers. I assume just like that popular waterfall hike over there that these folks were just sticking to that well-trodden path. Um, so most people go to Alaska and they're going up the Alaska Highway. They might go down the Kenai and then they go back. But I think you went a bit further, right? This was kind of like uh, one of those bucket list things. I'd never been in the interior of Alaska. I'd never seen the Northern Lights. And went up almost to the Arctic Circle. The roads, uh, they have some, some difficulty, I think, because of the weather conditions of keeping the roads um, what, like what we might be used to down in the lower 48. Because I thought the main highways would, would be uh, a little bit more like our main highways down here in the United States. They're not. So I did get to see the Northern Lights. I did travel along every highway in the state with the exception of one uh, and camped and boondock camped. This, this trailer was fantastic. Uh, it's, uh, it's, I, don't, I got a feeling this thing's gonna go for another 20 years and uh, I'm gonna use the heck out of it camping and having a good time with it. I get a lot of emails from you guys and I get emails about every trailer and negative emails about, you know, what happened with the build and what happened after I put this many miles. And this is from every brand, some brands obviously more than others. But with the tag with that many on the road, I'm not getting those emails. And maybe I will after making this video, but what really surprised me, we put out a tag video that got 1 million views. You know how difficult Oh, look at that. Pretty cool. And scary. He definitely looks like he's got some sting. He's going right for my tripod. Go back and look at that video. I don't think there is one owner complaint about the build quality. All the complaints on there are just about how it was designed. You know, does it need a TV? Does it need a microwave? This layout was weird. One million views, or maybe there's two now. I don't know how many million on it. and. Nobody is talking about poor build quality. So listen here what Brad has to say about the maintenance on his trailer. So you were talking about, you know, Alaska being prepared, uh, being self-sufficient. With this teardrop and the way it was built, what type of repairs have you had to do with it over these two years? What's it involved? You gotta give me a chance to think here. Um, um, as far as repairs or anything I've had to do for the trailer, it's virtually zero. Um, I mean, I've repacked the bearings twice now because of the mileage that, that's on the trailer. Um, I noticed that uh, there were, this fender was splitting a little bit, and uh, I drilled a little hole to stop the split. That, that was probably the first couple of months I had it, um, and that just that that seems to be a problem when they're trying to uh, make this this thin diamond plate aluminum type fender. But that's the only thing that I can think of that I've had to do anything with the trailer. It's just. And how about so, Brad? I'm thinking just basic maintenance. You said packing bearings. Have you ever had to reseal, recalk the trailer at all? No. Okay. I wish I could think of other things. You're looking for stuff. No, that's it. You, 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 no, you're looking for stuff. This, I've, I haven't, I can't think of a single thing. Basically, that's, I haven't what, had to do that's what I'm trying to share with the community. I've ran into so many people like you who own a tag trailer and they've had no issues. They're nothing but raving about this trailer. And many people like me have reservations about a trailer like this because we think it's coming from the mass RV industry. We think it's overproduced. I also thought these trailers were either associated with or built by the large RV industry. You know that industry I love to say just so many good things about. 
Well, these are not built in Elkhart, Indiana, the center of large RV world. These are built in Sugar Creek, Ohio. Now, I don't know if this means they're truly built by the Amish, but I do know this is a section or a portion of North America known for its top building quality and craftsmanship. It's an Amish region that's known for great furniture and cabinetry. So I think that says a lot about this build. Another misunderstanding I had about tag trailers is that they really weren't equipped to do off-grid, non-electrical style camping. But what you'll see here from Brad and his experiences, he had to do very minor upgrades to make it work in all situations. What I'm seeing here, you went over 20,000 miles, and the only thing you've added to this is an A or B awning and a couple buckets? Essentially, yes and no. There's so many little teeny things. Um, I already mentioned, okay, fire extinguisher up front. I didn't want to put my generator here because I was worried about tongue weight. Um, inside here, I put a Y on here. So if I want to, I have a little campfire, you know, the, the propane campfires. I can tap into this and set up my little, my propane campfire. I have a lithium battery in here now uh, so that I can essentially run it down to zero and not worry about it. Um, I mentioned this used to have a Yeti cooler. I knew I was going to be going up in Alaska and I was going to have to, um, you know, not be able to get ice. Brad just walked me around his trailer, showed me little updates he's done, things to make it more comfortable on the road, but in reality, nothing major. So out of the factory, this got you over 20,000 miles comfortably. Yeah, this has been a, a really good investment. Um, it, someday, um, if I decide to buy another trailer, I'm, I might go a little bit bigger, depending on uh, my personal situation. Um, if, if there's somebody else, <laughs> I would probably maybe go a little bit, uh, like maybe go to the tab. There's a couple different models. If you guys but, want Brad's phone number, I'll post it right here <laughs> on the screen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Eligible bachelor. <laughs> so I'm going to come off the river a bit just so you guys can really hear this. This is a point I want to drive home. If there's anything you take away from this video today, this is the one I want you to get. And that is, when I looked at the tag trailer, it was beautiful on the outside, but I thought this was just a facade. I thought the inside was a nightmare. And why I thought this was because of a product they use called Asdale. Now before Asdale, traditional RV manufacturing put either wood or Luon inside the walls of their trailer. Both materials that are susceptible to water damage. But then Asdale came out and they're touting it as the newest, greatest thing in this industry that it's gonna make it so your trailer lasts forever. And I'm a kind of glass half full guy and I can be a bit arrogant and you know that Dunning-Kruger effect where I think I know it all. I thought their use of Asdale was an admission of guilt. Essentially, when I read between the lines, here's what I heard. We make a really poor trailer so much so, in fact, that water is going to get into the walls. But don't worry, we have Asdale, this composite material that can't rot or get mildew. But you know what? That couldn't be further from the truth. And let me tell you why. I've been blessed with the opportunity to go all over the country, seeing different manufacturers and their trailers, learning about different materials. And I can almost predict with somewhat certainty the half-life of any trailer based on the materials used to build it. And what I've come to learn is if you're using traditional construction, and I mean traditional in the sense of if your trailer has seams, which 90% of them on the road do, whether it be glued or screwed or some other form of connecting those seams, after about five years, those seams will start to come apart if not maintained. It's pretty common based on the micro vibrations and the different frequencies and the movement side to side. And so what the Asdale actually means, instead of being a, again, an admission of guilt, it's actually an admission of the state of the small camper industry. It's saying that 90% of the campers, it's not if they'll leak, but when they'll leak. And so what they actually did by making Asdale is made a solution to a problem 90% of the campers will have. So what did I get right about the tag trailers? I think the first one, and it's very obvious, I assumed it would have a large, vibrant owner community. And just like Brad mentioned, there are tag teardrop rallies all over the country. There are forums and YouTube channels and places dedicated all things tab. 
And these people, they're almost cult-like. They're gonna take you under their wing. They are going to show you into this great community. And I think that's a big plus to buying one of these small camper trailers. You're not only buying a trailer, you're actually buying yourself into this vibrant group of people who think and wanna do things similar to you. The second thing that was pretty obvious to me at the beginning and has played out was that these trailers are probably the best option for someone who wants the best of both worlds. These guys and probably little guy, they make similar trailers and that is, they have everything for the shore power folks, the folks who want the microwave, the TV, the speakers, the electric heater. But they also have a boondock package that gets most of the things you need to also get you off grid. Is the tag trailer the perfect trailer? No. Like I mentioned, it still has seams and what many would consider unnecessary items on board. But is it a trailer worth considering? Absolutely. I think for the right use case scenario, this is one of the best teardrop trailers on the market. If you want to check out our full walkthrough tour of the Tag Boondock trailer, it's right here on the left of the screen. Or if you want to compare it to other teardrops, I have a full teardrop trailer walkthrough playlist right here on the right side. As for me, I'm going to try to get back down this path all in one piece, and I'll hopefully see you in the next episode.